Ethan Winters. Who is he? The protagonist of Resident Evil 7. Faceless. Has no character. People have talked shit about Ethan Winters for quite a long time. But what if I told you there was more to Ethan Winters than meets the eye? What if I told you he actually belongs in the canon? Yes, me, the guy who constantly talks shit about Resident Evil 7 is saying this to you right now. Why? Because I believe Ethan Winters is an umbrella scientist. Wanna know why I think that? Then continue to listen to this video. ACID got me seeing soul. They hybrids in my eye beams, but I've been living blindly. Gave my soul up for perfect timing. A desert cat reinvented by me. How crazy is that? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. We are here today with episode two of Bat Shit Crazy Theories. Now, if you have not seen the first video, a lot of the points I will be making in this video are going to make way more sense if you have heard the first theory. So I do recommend that you go back and watch that first one if you have not seen it yet. Now, I will definitely let you know, I'll try to recap a little bit of it when we get to those points, but I'm just trying to make it an all around easier experience for you to understand where I'm coming from by letting you know this first. Right off the bat, the first thing I need to do is ask you all a question. What do we know about Ethan Winner's past? If your answer was Ned's answer, then congratulations, because you're 100% correct. The only thing that we really know about his past is that at some point he became a systems engineer somewhere in Los Angeles. Now, I could be mistaken here, but I'd have to imagine that you'd have to be pretty effing smart to do that job. That doesn't necessarily mean you're smart enough to be a scientist, obviously, but still, you'd have to be pretty smart nonetheless. The other thing that we know is that Mia was actually working for The Connections. And the whole time, Ethan was thinking that she was actually working for some trading company and in her words she's pretty much a glorified babysitter now keep that in the back of your mind because it really seems like she's pretty annoyed and sick and tired of being a babysitter in the video that we see her in at the beginning of resident evil 7. hey baby i just wanted to send a quick hello and i love you oh good news i'm gonna be coming home soon yay <laughs> I cannot wait to be done with this babysitting job and come home to my loving husband. I miss you. Oh, I gotta get back to work. I love you, Ethan. I miss you so much. I'm sending tons of kisses. Bye, baby. Okay, so now I need to ask you guys something. In retrospect, looking back at that very first appearance of Mia, how disingenuous does she seem? Is she anything like the Mia that we know of now? No. If you're being honest with yourself, the only answer to that is no. She is not acting like the real Mia at all. I think this whole thing right here, it's an act. The only part in this entire video that seemed like a genuine reaction from Mia was the part where she says that she's sick of the babysitting job. I cannot wait to be done with this babysitting job. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to be done with this babysitting job. I mean, damn, like you really don't want to be doing this babysitting job, do you? Like, but why is she so annoyed? She hasn't even been doing the job for that long, unless she's been babysitting somebody else for much longer. Now, why is this stuff important? It's important because I honestly believe that Mia was assigned to Ethan. That is how she found him. She is an agent for the connections, which we already know. She's obviously a good liar, not a very good actress, but that's a different story, but she obviously is a lying bitch. We can all see through this facade right now. The only one of us that can't see through it seems to be Ethan. Now, maybe he's gullible, maybe he's just blinded by pussy, who knows? But the one thing that we can point out is that obviously 
Mia is an extremely fake person. And personally, I believe she's been lying to Ethan this whole time. She was sent by the connections to keep tabs on Ethan Winters, who is an umbrella scientist who survived experiments that were done on him by Oswell E. Spencer. And I believe the connections wanted her to do this because they wanted her to figure out why Ethan survived. Because for some reason, Ethan is special. And as we talked about in my video before this, Oswell is known for doing these experiments. And we also know that he did these experiments on Wesker. And that when Wesker was infected by the T-Virus, it somehow made him more of a super soldier than a zombie, like the regular scientists. And the connections wanted to know why, so they sent out Mia. But during this, I do believe that Mia ended up actually falling in love with Ethan. I don't think it was planned. I think it was something that just happened. So now I'm going to show you a piece of evidence here. This is a picture of a file from Resident Evil 5. Now, a lot of people have tried to debunk this and say, well, you know, just because it says Ethan W doesn't mean that it was Ethan Winters. And yeah, that's very well true. And yeah, it could be a coincidence. But as you guys will learn about me, if you continue to watch my theory videos, I do not believe in coincidence sometimes every once in a while okay yeah but most of the time there are no coincidences not only do we see that ethan w here was actually underneath umbrella he was a high person in umbrella level nine clearance that's huge not many people have level nine clearance now on here it does say that he is deceased now is the time when i take you back to the first theory do you remember in the last video when I was talking about how Wesker was experimented on at a very young age? We also know that Wesker was not the only person who was experimented on. This note was made by Spencer, who has a history of experimenting on people, especially at a young age. Now, one of the things that people say about this is, well, you know, how could he be a scientist when Ethan at the time, according to the canon timeline, would have only been like 13, 14, maybe 15 tops. And to them, I say, go do your own well actually shit at someone else's channel, you fucking asshole. No, I'm kidding. People in Project W were always young prodigies. Every one of them. Wesker, Alex, everybody that Spencer ever brought into Project W was young. And Ethan just happened to be very smart for his age. I mean, look at Alexia Ashford. She was like 17, 18 when she froze herself to give the T. Veronica virus time to gestate within her and assimilate to her body. I mean, Alexia Ashford was known as one of the smartest members of Umbrella ever. But let's go back to this deceased thing for a second here. Now I have heard other people say that okay well maybe he faked his death and that's how you survived. And honestly I don't subscribe to that. I don't think that at all. Guys this is a series where people contract a virus and come back to life all the time. Pretty much every single game. And if we think back to Resident Evil 1 we see Wesker get cut almost clean in half. Everybody thought he was dead and somehow he survived and got away. So who are we to say that Ethan couldn't have been assassinated? People thought, okay, he's dead. I just shot him. And then a little while later, he came back. He was reanimated because Spencer had been experimenting on him. And I personally think that this would actually make more sense for him to come back as opposed to him faking his death. Now, you might be wondering, why does that make more sense? Well, it seems like Ethan in RE7 doesn't even really know who the hell he is himself. Not only do us the player not really know much about him, but he himself doesn't seem to know exactly everything that happened back in the past. He remembers everything with Mia because obviously that's recent. Again, we're gonna go back to the other theory here, but Wesker experimented on Jill. Do you guys remember what happened to Jill? And it's kind of funny because now that I'm doing these, it's it's like, man, RE5 had way more information for us than I even realized at the time. But looking back at it now, that's actually a really important game, even though I don't really like it that much, but still. But back to the point, when Wesker experimented with Jill, she lost her memory for a time. Now, granted, it wasn't forever, but there has been a precedent set that you can get experimented on by these people and then lose your memory. So what I'm proposing is that 
but he reanimated and lost his memory. That's what's going on. That's why he doesn't remember Umbrella, right? That's why he doesn't remember everything about his past. And more importantly, it's the reason why the mold seemed to have given him different powers from everybody else. He's kind of like a god amongst men at that point. The reason being is Ethan is possibly one of the only people on the face of the earth that has both the progenitor virus and the molded virus within him. And those two mixed together have basically given him superhuman abilities. Now last time I was talking about how the molded virus was more of controlling the bioweapons and that the progenitor virus was actually something that pretty much created the bioweapons. So what I'm saying here is that the mixture of these two is the reason why Ethan is so powerful. There's really no other explanation. And to go on to another point, this one's not as important, but it is something I've noticed, and I know other people have probably noticed this as well, although it might seem very trivial, and that is how he heals himself. Now, most of the time in these games you have herbs. In RE6 you have herbs, you condense them into pills, yada yada. But in this game, that changes. In Resident Evil 7 it changes, in Resident Evil 8 it changes. Instead of using herbs like we always did for years and years, this character is the first character to use chem fluid. Coincidence? Possibly. But again, I do not believe in coincidence. So if this guy is a systems engineer, how is it possible that he knows exactly how to use the chem fluid? Not only does he use the chem fluid to heal himself but he also uses it to create ammunition he has quite a lot of knowledge about chem fluid for a systems engineer doesn't he we're gonna move on to the last point of this video probably won't be very long but i want to ask you all a question how long had it been before ethan found mia three years three years do you know what that means that means that for three years blue umbrella didn't do shit about Evelyn. Why? Because they didn't know about it? Please, come on, it's Blue Umbrella. I guarantee they knew about it. But then Ethan gets involved, and all of a sudden you got Clone Chris, or excuse me, Real Chris, come out and save him. Why? Because what really happened was that Blue Umbrella was keeping tabs on Ethan Winters. That's how they got there so quickly. That's why they went in there to investigate. It wasn't because it was just a bioweapon incident, because they would have done that three years ago. You're gonna tell me that that tanker accident didn't hit the news or anything? Nobody knew about the tanker accident? Really? Nobody would have guessed that from Blue Umbrella? Come on, they're smarter than that. That's all this company does, is track bioweapons and try to eradicate them. So there's absolutely no way, no way, that they didn't know that that tanker went down with a bioweapon on board. No, they chose to leave it there because they wanted Ethan to go in there because they have their own hidden agenda, which I may or may not talk about in another theory coming up. But with that being said, that is exactly why I think Ethan Winters used to be an umbrella scientist. So thank you for your time. Y'all have a great night. Please hit the like and subscribe. Take it easy. Late.